Hi, welcome to my channel. Good to have you here. Today we're going to do a quick unboxing of my new knife. Uh, I was just in LA, uh, at Beverly Hills actually, matter of fact, and uh, I was in need of a new knife uh, for my cooking. And I went to Jonathan Broida's place called Japanese Knife Imports right at the Beverly Hills. And uh, they're actually quite famous. Uh, all of my sushi chef friends and uh, uh, Japanese knife connoisseurs have been actually ordering a lot of the knives from Jonathan over the years. Uh, Corin Imports in New York is another big name, uh, but on the West Coast side, Jonathan kind of got the whole market there. Uh, so I stopped by and uh, unfortunately due to the COVID protocol, uh, we couldn't really go into the shop and you know sit down and go through every single handle inspections and whatnot. So had to go with uh, Jonathan's uh, recommendation and also the recommendation from my chef on uh, what kind of a knife that I'm gonna have to get for my next collection. So here it is. Uh, just came in, so I'm kind of excited to share this uh, unboxing with you. So let's open it up and uh, just kind of go over what we have here. So one of the cool thing about the whole knife is uh, obviously chefs love having a new knife because uh, it is sort of the new toy that we get to play with. And as a chef, we absolutely need a nice sharp knife to do our job. So it is very important that we have a good knife and uh, I'm excited. This is my first brand new knife in a couple years actually. So here it is, a little certificate and a receipt I suppose. Uh, and everything is uh, just a bunch of packing slips, really well packed, um, big fragile sign up there. You can see that these guys really do care about how things get shipped out. So yeah, so it says, uh, thank you so much for choosing Japanese knife import. We hope you enjoy your Kochi 210 millimeter Kurochi Deba. The cladding help protect the knife from the rust and corrosion. It is a carbon steel. So it says the exposed carbon steel edge makes it easy to sharpen to put a great edge and have a great edge retention. However, because it is a carbon steel, it will rust if you don't take care of it. Uh, they're always available if you have any concern. Blah, blah, blah. Awesome. Great to see a handwritten note uh, from a company who sends you a knife. It's really neat. Uh, so let's uh, <laughs> open this up now. It is uh, really well packaged. Wrapped in a traditional Japanese uh, paper as well. I do like how they present everything here. Um, very neat. I have no patience for gift wrapping. So. There we go. So here it is. Kochi 210 millimeter Kurouchi Deba. Kurouchi means uh, black hammer, uh, so which means the top part of the blade won't be polished. So open it up. Right there. Pretty. And ooh, as a I'm gonna have to weigh this and uh, let you guys know, but it is heavy. Uh, substantial, very heavy, has a octagonal burn, uh, chestnut grip on it. If you can see it, very cool. Nice and charred. Very front heavy. Uh, the balance point is literally I'll say. Very front heavy uh, as uh, all Deba should be. Mm, beautiful. So as they said, the name Kurouchi means a black hammer. 
and the top portion of the blade is hammered and is not polished and that is actually on purpose for design and the beauty of it quite gorgeous 210 millimeter so 21 centimeter uh, it is uh, definitely long enough for me to do a nice fillet on uh, the amberjack, yellowtails, snapper will definitely go through this in a one slice basically. It is very heavy uh, and it is very heavy on purpose because it needs to cut through the bone without me trying to jerk it. Uh, some of the French knife that I use at the restaurant, unfortunately it doesn't have the heft. It doesn't have the weight, it doesn't have the mass. So whenever I try to slice through the bone, it just doesn't work. It just simply doesn't work because of the because of the lack of the weight. So with this much of substantial weight, the momentum of me sliding through the flesh will literally go through those bones like butter. So really cool. Um, they use a V2 steel. Uh, and uh, that's a carbon steel and it takes a very good edge and it has a really good edge retention so looking at the edge looks absolutely gorgeous one thing that I did ask Jess and uh, Jonathan to do is that uh, before they ship the knife uh, have them sharpen it one more time for me so out of the out of the Smith Smith shop whatever knife shop they do come out sharpened uh, however as you can see uh, I have asked them to sharpen one more time uh, and you'll see an extremely polished edge right here at the edge also the back what happens is uh, the knife comes sharp but we always want to break them in uh, so we always need to do this initial sharpening it can get really tedious just because especially when the blade is this thick it is substantial knife so I kind of got a little smart about it and I asked them I said hey can you do first uh, sharpening for me and uh, they gladly did it for me so very grateful uh, they did an exceptional job uh, it really is a mirror finish you know when you uh, when you see a Japanese movie where you can see the the actor uh, putting a blade right through their eye and they can see the reflection of their face and eyeball i can see that right now it's uh it's pretty cool i, I don't know how to capture that uh, exactly but uh i can see my face right on the tip of the edge it's really neat uh but yeah very happy with the end product and uh this is uh one of their less expensive uh Knife, matter of fact. <laughs> I tend to be very budget minded whenever I get a knife. Um, expensive knives are nice, but they are tool and they do wear out. Uh, this, with the proper care, should last me over 10 years. But my chef friend spent $1,000 on his knife, and uh, I don't know if I really want to go $1,000 right now. This is uh, $285, so it's not cheap either. Uh, for a one piece of knife, $285, you might say, oh my God, that is insane. Well, but if you think about the weight of the steel, the amount of steel that goes in, uh, the handcraft uh, beauty and artistry that goes behind on this traditional Japanese deba, the price is good, I think. I, th I think this is the good, uh, balance of uh, price point and uh, capability very happy how it holds uh, I can definitely cut up some really good amount of fish out of this very nice long handle I'll hold it this way looks good yeah very happy about it so yeah there it is uh, that's sort of the little opening unboxing of my brand new Deba. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is a carbon steel, so it will rust once it gets wet and it doesn't get dried out. So I have to be very cautious about how I keep this thing clean. Um, after each use, 
Uh, I can't leave any oil residue. Once I'm done with the filming, I will have to wash this oil residue and then also have to polish it out uh, because it will leave the mark uh, and it will also attract uh, moisture and uh, rust. So for proper care, it is a little bit more of a work, uh, but you know I'm used to it. I'm used to taking care of the knife. Uh, next one uh, on my uh, unboxing, I will actually open up my Yanagi. Uh, Yanagi is a slicing knife. Uh, this one is more of a fillet knife, and of course you can chop with this as well. Um, and I don't know if you noticed earlier, it is a single babel, just like the traditional Japanese uh, samurai sword, I guess. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's really beautiful. I, I really love the look of it, the Kurochi finish on it. Yeah, I'm very happy, very substantial, impressive on uh, in-hand feels. And very poor balanced. But the handle being long enough where I can hold it. It's a little heavy on the front, but I won't get too tired from using it. So yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, for this uh, unboxing of my Kurochi Deba. Hope to utilize this and uh, make a delicious meal in the future. Thank you so much. Have a great day.